<laughs> what a fucking day it's been. Hello, everyone. Good day, good evening, good morning. Good whenever the fuck this is for you watching it. Black Friday is upon us, so all the stress is coming out, and I love it. It's every year. It's a good time. But it's late on a Friday evening. Mr. Aiden and I are training. Yes, sir. Um, shoulders, no presses. I know there's lots of updates that need done. Everybody's been curious. We've been fucking stupid busy, as you can see. Cool shit. It's awesome. Hydraulic 2 popping off. Thank you, everybody, for your support. And you'll be happy to know we have, we are going to be adding two more delicious flavors. You're not allowed to find out yet. But let me say that if you were a fan of sour shit, you're going to love them. Two delicious scoops. High octane shit we're talking here. A little bit of demo day. So, you know, I own a supplement company and somehow I have fucking, I lost every single fucking shaker that I have in this building. Like a dickhead. I have a warehouse full of them. We'll send John there on Monday. So we're going to do the Jake Cutler. I hope everybody's doing well. I appreciate all the support. Elf is back, ladies and gentlemen. Elf Farm Fed for you. This is its 20th year anniversary for Elf the movie. Yes, somehow Warner Brothers decided that Seth Ferocian Axe and Sledge was the brand to collaborate with Elf on. <laughs> I couldn't see it with another brand. I, you're right, dude. No, I couldn't. No, no, it's, way. It, no it's awesome. It's, uh, it's very cool, and I appreciate all of the support from all of you with it because the flavors are delicious. We have four flavors ice sugar cookie, maple syrup on pancakes. That's a good one. It is the best, in my opinion. But it, it's good. Uh, white chocolate spice, Christmas, and a protein shake. And then we also have peppermint bark. So those four, they are all delicious. I still got to make some Ninja Creamies with them. That, that's what I need to do. So it's been a minute since the last video we did because we're so busy and all the shit's hitting the fan. However, uh, I have put on some weight this morning. I was 213.6. Very excited about it. However, I've had some, I've had a little bit of a hiccup. Earlier this week on Monday, I was training chest and my fucking elbow just all of a sudden like went off the rails and I thought I was gonna, I thought I did something to it and tore my tricep again. It hurt that bad. Maybe if I just shove a bunch of BPC in there and like growth hormone and it'll get better somehow. And I'm like, Seth, that's not the answer. And then it got thinking in my head and Bob had mentioned, he's like, maybe it's arthritis. I'm like, motherfucker, if this is arthritis, I feel bad for every comment I ever made about old people bitching about their arthritic hands or anything they had going on because this shit fucking hurt. So I woke up yesterday morning and no more pain. Hold the fuck on. Maybe it is arthritis. It doesn't hurt right now. I feel strong. I'm not fucking with it today. We're gonna do shoulders, no presses today. So we're gonna do a fuckload of side sides. We're gonna do some upright rows. We're gonna do front raises. We're gonna do different variations of front raises so you guys can see all the different ways to do it. Because if you can't do raises, say your shoulder hurts or like something hurts with presses, whether it's your elbow, your shoulder, something, but you're able to do raises, front raises, side raises, rear delt raises in different ways, upright rows, some shrugs. You can get one hell of a fucking shoulder workout and that's what we're gonna do today, ladies and gentlemen. I like being this weight. Like 215 is gonna feel pretty good. I'm only a couple pounds away. I don't wanna creep up to 220 because I already had to get, I already started wearing 2XL shit. <laughs> I went from 204 and now we're up. You know what else is really fucking cool here? All the decals in the gym. How oh, fucking awesome. The big axe and sledge, the absolutely massive All-American Roughneck. The big HWMF over in the corner. I don't have problems, just more work to do. See that motherfucker every day. Because you don't have problems, you just gotta do work. That's all you gotta do. There's people in the world with real problems. Every day they deal with them, and all you have to do is go to work and be a good motherfucker. That's one of the other three sayings I have here. I've been saying this lately, I ain't dead yet. Little fucking morbid, somewhat dramatic, but it's me, what do you expect, huh? Little intense. I ain't dead yet. And I've been saying it lately, as of recent for a while, because every time something intense occurs, or I wanna go after something in life, or there's an issue that comes up, and it's really heavy, it's intense, where someone is like, or it's just, it's overbearing. Uh, and after I go through it logically, and I say to myself, well, I ain't dead yet. I don't got any problems, just fucking work. Why don't we shut the fuck up and do it? Why don't we rip some fucking shit and do as much good shit as we can in this life while we're alive? And I ain't dead yet. So every day I'm gonna look at that. Cause I'm not, I'm gonna keep fucking living.
Okay, warmed up. I did three warm up sets. Uh, we're gonna rip through sides. That's why I was doing warm up sets on sides. I did the 25s, the 35s, and the 45s. Now I'm gonna start at the 50s, do the 50s, do the 60s, kind of feel it out. Probably hang out in that 60, 65 range. We'll do four work sets. Last set, we'll do a nasty drop set. Um, we'll probably run the rack and, and increments of 10 down. If my top set's at 65, we'll go 65, 55, 45, 35, 25. Um, and in between sets, okay, like whenever I go from the 65 down to the 55, I'll probably like give it like an eight to 10 second break in between to let the blood flow to my shoulders. So that way I get, I'm letting all the blood flow. And then like as I go, it'll get more and more difficult, more and more pumped. And uh, yeah, we're gonna rip through since there is no presses in this entire workout. Um, we're gonna focus on exhausting the muscles as much as possible without presses. So that means don't be a fucking pussy. I have done a lot of recreational drugs in my life. And whenever it's late night Fridays, Aiden and I train in here, there is nothing like training like a fucking savage. There is nothing like it. I've done a lot of fucking crazy shit in my life, dumb shit, but this stuff will always be king. I fucking love front raises, dumbbell front raises. I love them. You'll see me get into the fucking like, I just, we're not egotistical here. We're watching ourselves grow. We're watching, seeing how things work. Like we're enjoying this. This is our time. This is why fucking this shit's so cool. So with front belts, again, this is my, my cut. I've been teaching everyone in the office how to make these cuts because it looks cool and makes your traps look big and your, cap, your delts capped even more. Um, but whenever you're doing front raises, I'll pronate it, I'll supinate it, you'll see me do those different variations. You'll see me like start to go out, okay? However, the heavier you go, the more risk of injury you're running with here. So, but I never go above like eye level. And the neutral, I take the top of the dumbbell to my eye level. That's as high as I'll go, okay? Because in there, I'm watching all this fucking crazy shit happen with my front delts. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and since we're not doing presses, we can do more of these because it's not really a real workout if you're not doing presses. <laughs> it's like girl math. So we've been talking about in the office, it's been a joke, but so again, like you can see it all work and I want to, I want to get into good lighting and I want to get into a fucking zone and just move. Now, what I was getting at with the tip, that's the first thing. The next is where you grab the dumbbell. Okay, if I grab the dumbbell all the way to the top and my hand is here, as I'm coming up, it's gonna hit my front delt different than if I pull my hand all the way back, okay? Because it's gonna pull on my arms, shoulders, biceps. It's gonna pull differently on my body. You can see it happening, like the weight's forward versus the weight being backwards. It's gonna hit different. Still doing motherfucking front raises, everybody. But as you're doing it, you just wanna see how it feels and manipulate the exercise so that you can get the most benefit. And you're gonna watch it while it's occurring. Now, 40 pound dumbbells can be heavy, so you pick the weight that you feel comfortable with so you can get the motion and the vibe and the feel from, okay? 
Do not overcomplicate this and do not try and do things faster than necessary. You should take the time to learn your body, learn the exercises, and watch your fucking physique transform right before your eyes in front of the fucking mirror. Me personally, I like all of them. However, I really like holding it back. But once you get super heavy with these things, it's inevitable for it to slip through your hands and it to go back here. So just pay attention, be mindful. Pays to be in shape too. Do your cardio. I think that's my biggest advantage right now with everything, is that I'm in really good shape cardiovascularly. I've never been in this good cardiovascular shape like in my entire life, so like doing this and then putting on some muscle, training hard like this again, I love it. Still need to eat more, I believe. I still don't think that I'm getting in calories, enough calories consistently every single day. I'm still like underestimating my needs just because it's still in my head and making sure that I don't get like, like ch super chubby. It's got stick boy season, you gotta eat. And I was telling him last night, Hannah made, um, so one of the reasons I think I got like a really good pump, but I still think I should have ate more than I did today. Last night she made like a homemade chicken pot pies, but like just the pot pie filling in a crock pot and then biscuits, like you'd open the biscuit up and then put the pot pie stuff on top of it. I ate like six of them last night. <laughs> three at dinner and then three for a late night snack. But I don't do that every day. And I probably should, I need to up the calories, I'm just still little by little. And then me hurting, hurting my elbow this week, which is crazy. Dude, I was bitching up a storm this whole week and now like nothing. So I took it easy this week, but now I feel good. Next week, I'm gonna push limits again. <laughs> Typical gym bro. I know, I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I was like, I have a bottle of DECA. <laughs> nope, nope, I'm gonna call the doctor and get it from him. They ain't pretty, but they fucking work. It's like old school stuff. So this is the one exercise that I get a little, I get a little extra in there. However, I think personally, whenever I was building my physique years ago, it was that whole trap into the delt, round it off. Like, you can see the rear delt starting to fill up again. Get the seven on the back, that fucking. But the upright rows, the heavy upright rows, they pull on your upper traps, and then you get to yank up into it all. Get a little rhythm with it, baby. Aiden's doing calves. If you haven't met Aiden, meet Aiden. Hey, motherfuckers. We have grown quite the uh, the meathead crew here at Pump Town. Uh, but Aiden's doing makeshift calves because we don't have a calf machine. So every time he does uh, <laughs> he does calves, does calves, I got to jump in. But so face pulls, <clears throat> I don't do them like everybody else does them. Um, I do a different variation of them. Your rear delts. So your rear delts are incredibly small. They're one of the smallest muscle groups on your body. So they're difficult to hit because it's easy for your stronger muscle part, your bigger muscles to take over in certain exercise. So with rear delts, they can change how you look from the front and from the side and from the rear. We want to achieve this seven look you heard me talking about before. So it's like it just, it's that cut that the separation between your delt and your tricep, and it goes all the way back, and it just, like from the side, like a seven. Okay, so 
with rear delts that we're trying to achieve because you can see it right there. And if you have a bigger rear delt, it kind of pushes you, pushes your delts up and it gives you more cap to delt, that three dimensional look that we're trying to achieve. And then from the side, you're like, fuck dude, yeah. The bigger the rear delt, the bigger you look. And then from behind, same thing. You need the rear delt to tie everything together. So whenever you see me doing a lot of training, I do everything instinctively based on poses. So how do I look when I'm posing? Because I want to look good. That gets the reason I train. I like to look good. I like to feel good. And as I was doing my front raises and I'm watching myself grow, if I'm doing these things, whenever I hit a crab, like that's what I'm envisioning, all this funky, cool shit happening. Now, whenever I'm doing face pulls, I'm going to lighten this. Just, just for demonstration purposes. Whenever I'm doing these, most people would have this higher and they pull to their face, which is effective, okay, it is. But me, the way I like to do them is, I'll bend over, keep my head up, and I'll pull here, okay? And as I'm pulling back, I'm gonna focus and feel and pull this rope out with my pinkies, okay? And feel it in my rear delts. And as I get heavier, I just stay in this. I lock my shoulders and I don't use any lat, I don't use any bicep. I feel all in my rear delts. Now, the reason I'm not doing this, okay, even though it is effective and you do feel it, and I like this, like head slightly up, but down, is because whenever I go to hit, everybody knows whenever you set your feet in a rear double bicep, set your hands above your head, and then pull down. So, the face pulls that we're doing, like this, slightly head, slightly up, and you're pulling them back, is the same as you throwing your arms up, you're looking to the ceiling, head up, and you're hitting that rear double by so that your rears are, you're up. You guys get it, you, you see me, you following. So, that's how I like to do rear delts, and I'm not doing anything, the dumbbells, because we did some heavier upright rows, and I was hitting my rear, so I'm gonna do these. Man, I keep doing all my rear delt stuff, but I'm not feeling it. You gotta take time to feel it and to take time to make that connection with your rear delts rather than just doing, you know, the reverse pec deck on this massive range of motion and just take all your traps and mid back and your rhomboids are just taking all of it and you're not growing any of your rear delts because you're using bigger, stronger muscles. Not so much the rear delts that you're trying to hit. So, I like dumbbell shrugs. I like heavy dumbbell shrugs. However, bro, I have not done, I have not done uh, heavy shrugs consistently in years. So, I mean, I'm enjoying getting back into it. Uh, but I prefer dumbbell over barbell. Both are very effective. I think that if you're young and you're trying to build a physique, you must do both. You don't have to do both in the same workout. However, I do suggest possibly alternating back and forth so that you can see and assess how your physique changes and how you feel after doing them. But for the most part, heavy dumbbells. You have to do shrugs. If you want big traps, you have to fucking shrug and you have to move some weight. So um, it just takes time. Making the connection is very important. You're never gonna have traps that meet the bottoms of your ears if you don't do shrugs. You fucking have to. So. Uh, Every single shoulder day or back day, depending on the program that I was building, I'd have shrugs on there. And there was times whenever I would do heavy dumbbell and heavy barbell or heavy barbell with then some lighter behind the back so I could pinch them at the top and get the feel. Or I'd have heavy dumbbell with that. Shrugs, you gotta fucking do them. And most of you guys know and have figured out by this time, 
that I'm a volume guy with heavy weight, like moderate to heavier weight. Bro split, jack, jam, juicy. And if you do that, like I'm figuring out that I can't train like I used to because I'm not on the same amount of shit I used to be, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy it and have a good time. We'll get back to the 150s, shrugging the 150s again at some point. It takes some time now. I wish my head was small again. <laughs> Me had thoughts. You know, I mean, I'm, I look back at videos and I'm like, man, look how tiny my head was. Just because that was so big. You know, meathead stuff. Thick boy stuff. I don't even know what's for dinner tonight, but I'm excited to eat it. Uh, but I'm going to finish up with a couple more sets of shrugs here. I'll do the 120s. But everybody, I cannot thank you enough for the support. It is beautiful. Black Friday is upon us. The entire team here for Axe and Sledge, All-American Roughneck, Just Work, have been working their asses off for this event. We are giving away a ton of cool shit for Axe and Sledge and for All-American Roughneck. Um, bigger deals than we've ever done, cooler giveaways than we've ever done. People in the demo crew, you're going to have the opportunity to come here and train. Get on the podcast. Do all kind of cool shit that everybody wants to do here with us. So uh, we're, we're doing it up. It's going to be great. So thank you for all the support. Most important thing in life is to be a good motherfucker. I cannot stress it enough. At times like these, whenever you see um, uh, the world going crazy in certain aspects, be true to yourself. Don't be a piece of shit. Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, some people, you know, scoff at this type of shit and blow it off. I am one hard motherfucker. However, there are times whenever I get in a really fucking rough spot and um, the people around me, even Aiden and these youngsters that are in here training, there's days whenever I see them training, it just makes me feel better about what we have here and how special it is. So, if you see somebody, if you're in a really good spot and you see somebody that's not doing too well, another guy or just in a rough spot or somebody's going through some shit, and you aren't at this time, you are in a good spot, you're stronger than ever, reach out to him. Be a good motherfucker. That's what I mean when I'm saying be a good motherfucker. Be, be some, whenever someone needs something and you have the strength to help them in there, do that, okay? Be a good motherfucker. And as always, always, slap the old lady on the ass and let her know that you love her. And you guys have yourselves a beautiful day.